that is very echoey for some reason. I don't know what's going on with that. My room is <laughs> not like that. So let me put in my little headphones, of course, like during this whole thing. So when I start channeling, um, I zone out. I'm not looking at you because if I look at you, then I'm like, oh my God, haircut's great. Like the lights are great. Like my AD, <laughs> right. And so you're going to see me staring at like blank walls. Yeah. Or it's been this cat right here. So I <laughs> just being honest, hang on. So and I apologize if I get very emotional. I'm a very emotional person. You, you must have a lot of cancer and Pisces in you everywhere. What you very, very, very feeling. I know that's why I shift my energy for people. And I just went from somebody that's very Capricorn, Leo, like intense drive. And you have this about you. You have this uh, feeling about you. It's like, I don't know, like in a way, it almost feels like you're like water and mother earth, like all at the same time. It's like this really beautiful, I would trust you with my dog. Like I would Aww. trust you with my child. Like that's just how you feel. And it feels like, well, that's why I'm just going to go into you real quick. And then I want to go into channeling because yeah. we're here in, oh my God, you've seen a lot. You've seen a lot. People have my, been. My clients uh, that I don't even meet are after we talk they're always like I don't know why I just opened so much up to you and shared all that with you I've never done that before really? so yeah. yeah it's because of the have you ever seen your chart before do you know what you are do you know all the stuff you are there uh -huh. Okay, hold on. I want to go. I'm going to go five minutes over for you just because I want to go and look at this. I know I have another session, but I think you're great. And I want to show you why I want to show you yeah. why. Um, so when I, and then I want to go into channeling. So when I'm talking about a chart, so this is not, you know, people talk about astrology and they talk about like, oh, are you going to get rich and stuff? I don't look at it anything like that. The way that I look at it is from reading and experiencing thousands of people and clients and spirit, there is a vibration about each person and they have a combination to them. And um, they they can be like, you feel like you're very, very in tune with me. It, like, it just makes them special and you can see how it affects them. How, like my last client, she had a Scorpio and, and Mars. And I asked her, I said, did you ever want to do like blood spatter expert? And did you want to get into like CIA or hacking? And she goes, stop it. And I was like, what? And she goes, I literally went to school for hacking. I wanted to go in the CIA, but they would not let me. And I was like, well, that's because of this. So um, it, it's, that's just the thing you learn from. So with this, when is your birthday? Mine's 11, 7, 88. 71367. You are a cancer. You said 71367? Yeah. Okay. Hang on. I knew it. That's why. Um, and then what city were you born in? I was in Houston, Texas. Bellingham, Washington. Really? Where's that at? Up uh north of Seattle by two hours by the Canadian border. Wow. Wow. Do you have just a question just because I'm fascinated. I've never been up in that area. Do you have indigenous in you or anything like that because you're close to Canada? I'm Alaskan native. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. So do you know what they just showed me? The only reason why I asked that is because they showed me Alaska Airlines and how they have the picture of the person. Oh, that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that came from oh that's funny oh, that's so cool very beautiful wonderful to meet you no wonder it's even deeper there that's a thing that is a thing you can tell when somebody is um or they were or you know or if they passed because they have this it's like the aurora it feels like you have like the aurora borealis inside of you it's like beautiful beautiful and magical and wonderful and light and just like fascinating all at the same time and so hold on i want to look at your chart and tell you why you feel this way uh because you this is why you and i vibe that's exactly why so your sun sign so your outer personality what you give the world so what you give to me or you know anybody you meet at the grocery store we know that's in cancer so that's um loving caring compassionate fuzzy socks take care of all the animals and everything else around you the reason why I feel like you feel like me is because you're 
basically your uh, moon, which is your inner emotional self, that's your feminine side, um, that is in Libra. That's exactly where mine is at as well. And so that means you always care about everybody else more than you care about yourself. That also means you're always the person that's in the middle trying to make sure that other people are okay. So like the mentor, right? The teacher, all that stuff. That also means that you probably also have a chronic disease or something going on underneath the surface that's like really hurting you. And you, because that's what happens in this. You're trying to find balance because I'm a Scorpio in my son and I'm a Libra moon and I have a chronic illness that makes me die. And so it's this finding balance between helping yourself, helping others, and then spiritually growing. It's, that's your area. Another thing too, is that your communication style is also in cancer. So mine's in Scorpio, which is why you're kind and you're nice and you're sweet and you're feeling. That's why I'm still kind and nice, but I also tell people to shut up because they're like, <laughs> you know about it that that's where the Scorpio comes from another thing is that your Venus so this is how you love this is how you want to be loved and this is how you give love and return this is in Virgo this means that your love was not appreciated when you were younger this means that it was probably shot down a lot this means that people probably walked over you and said poo poo and so you learned how to be softer in it or you learned how to be extra compassionate to try to make up for that. Um, Virgos are very self-critical in their love signs. Um, it also means that they don't always speak up for what they want in their heart because they get meek. And so now you have that and then you have cancer, which is all about, all right, I'll just take it in and I will hold it all. And then you have Libra that's like, no, I will take the burden. You don't <laughs> need to do it. Like that's where this goes. Um, this also means though in love, that's why you're really good when you have clients or when you're talking to people, because what is Virgo also in love? They're hyper aware of everything around them. They can see it. They can like pinpoint it and pick it out. Like that's the whole thing. And then the other thing is that you're Mars, um, which is why you really like food, which is why you really like beauty, which is why you like this peaceful serenity area. And this would be the difference between you and I is that your Mars, so your drive in life, um, your masculine side is in Libra. So that's a feminine side. And so that's all about that's all about, you know, how am I going to weigh this out? You know, I can't go too far over here. I'm losing myself. Oh no, now we got to go over here. I just want to have good food and good wine and beautiful art and a fun time and dancing. Like they're very creative. They're very artistic. They need to do that stuff. Like that is the thing. And they have to be in a pretty environment. So why would you and I differ on this? You and I are pretty much very much the same all the way down. The difference is in my Mars, I have Aries. So that's where this rawr comes from. That's where that passion and that fire comes from. So me and you, if like you and I work together, I would have you um, take care of my clients that are really, really suffering from grief, right? Because in my era, I'd be a little bit harsher. I wouldn't mean to be, but I'm like, it's okay. You can get out of it. Whereas you would become very compassionate with them. And I would be, but I come from a tough love area and we can build up together. You would come from an area of you know, we can do this. I'll hold your hand. I will walk you through it. I'll sugarcoat it for you. And I love you. Like, so that would be the difference. But that also means with this is that you would do it with yourself too in other relationships. And that's what you have to watch out for it. You also have like a ton of like animal vibes around you all the time. I have no idea why or where that comes from. May I haven't felt that in a long time. It's, I don't know if they're just high, widely attracted to you or if you have a lot of them in the past, we can go into that. The other thing with this is you have a thing called Jupiter. That is, um, that is if you are on this vibration, this is how you gain luck. This is how you gain your footing. And so it's interesting because yours is in Leo. So you have to learn how to be number one in order to gain your footing. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to say, no, this is an injustice. I have it. Like, so that's your thing is finding your power, finding your voice. Um, and then the other thing with this is that your north node. So this is what you are trying to become in life. So your starting off is a cancer. So this emotional, deep, intense, brooding, loving, self-sacrificing person. And so what are you trying to turn into before you go? You're trying to turn into a Taurus. And so what is that? That is slow and steady wins the race. Same as the cancer, right? Same as the crab. It's less protected from the world. It's less like, oh my God, it's coming to hurt me. And it's more like, 
I have this, I have this now, and I can build up from here. It's not cocky, it's confident. And so, and it's all about acquiring wealth, acquiring money. Like I want to do this. I want to help save the world also so I can make sure that I have food on the table too. And so this is a great point for people building their own business, building their own company, building their own format. And so that's what you are. Um, the other thing, which is what you are, I guess you'd say this would be your ego and you've gotten rid of that. You've tried to get rid of that and you've done a good job. So this is called your ascendant. That is your outer personality. That is your ego. Usually we get rid of that by the time we're about 25, stuff like that normally. Um, so yours is in Libra. And so again, it's, it's, being too nervous about how everybody else feels besides you and it stresses you out like usually people with this much libra they had very either complicated childhoods or it was very 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 stressful and so they're always or they had very very toxic relationships and so they're always having to like mm, like be in the middle and it can cause a lot of anxiety and so when you have a lot of libra like me um just like you what happens what do we do we eat we enjoy it. We, we indulge. We, if I didn't have Crohn's, I used to be 140 pounds heavier than this and I have Crohn's and now that's what's happening. But like me and sugar and ice cream and like fatty things, like what's what we do. We hide our feelings. We, we go down and we're like, Oh, I'll just protect myself. Um, the other thing too, and this is what I like for you. And this is why I think, um, like the spiritual area and talking to people and getting that area is perfect. So this is your second house. Your second house is the heartbeat of your life. Um, this is kind of like, where your drive is not just your drive. It's just like, this would be like your baseline. And this is why you and I vibe because that is in Scorpio. And so it is this undertone. It's this intensity. It's this going down into the depths of hell and then coming back up and being reborn and being able to talk and communicate with everybody from all walks of life. Like, I don't know. I like it. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. This is a very cool chart. Um, and then the okay. other thing too is you're welcome. Is it that you, so I have, and this is the difference in the energy and I think you can feel it too. So I have, pause. We have a thing called masculine versus feminine energy. Masculine means we think logically first. Feminine means we think with our heart first. And so I have eight masculine and I have two feminine, which is why I come off very like direct and here and now, but compassionate. You are eight feminine and two masculine. And so you hold everything very emotionally very intensely here. That also means that you can be too compassionate and people can walk all over you and don't let that happen. Okay. Especially because you have all these other very intense emotional water signs, but man, I love like, how intense are you into spirituality? Um, I, I don't go to anywhere, but I'm, I really, yeah, believe in it and, mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah, it would, it, it is you, your charts almost exactly like mine. It's just, mine is a little bit more cocky and not cocky, but just a little more direct and like snarky. Cause that's what Scorpio does. Yours is self-sacrificing and compassionate, um, but also direct. And you are trying to be that leader. So you are trying to be this Leo. And it's interesting because I'm trying to become a cancer. So I'm trying to become you and you're trying to become like me. So we, that's where this comes from. Okay. So it's almost like when they talk about mirroring, right? You meet somebody, they come into your life so that you can uh, bounce off them, right? And see it. So there is a gentleman. So I want to go into channeling now too. Um, and then of course, if you ever have any questions or anything, or if you need me, please email me and I will get right back to you. Okay. Um, there, oh my God. I believe this is, uh, Norman, he like walks around your house, hang on, he's like walking around your house picking up stuff, why, hang on, I don't know, he's talking about, you. I don't, I, Maybe you talk to him. Maybe you talk to him a lot. I don't know. He's talking about how you helped him through a lot. Um, he, hold on. 
he comes up to you and he just gives you this hug. Like just like the whole thing is just coming up and giving this big hug up here and just a squeeze. And for me, there's a couple of things that mean that. One, that means that maybe he wasn't so nice, right? Or maybe he wasn't as compassionate as he needed to be in your life or something like that. And so now he's coming back and now he's like trying to say like, thank you for helping me. Maybe you talk to him. There's a lot of things for the things they say like that. She, he, hold on, hold on. He says like, I wish I could have gotten closer to you. I wish I could get closer to you. I wish I could hang on. It's almost like, so he stands behind you. He puts his shoulder here. So this would be a person that is now, it's almost like he's trying to guide you. He's trying to push you. He's trying to make you do better. Um, his type of intensity and his way about, oh, wow, talking to people. He likes to talk a good game like he's a business person or like he's reaching out to the community. He's like, da, 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 da. He's all about being gregarious in a way. He says that, hang on. Too quick, too quick, too quick. So people like didn't get closer for his passing or something like that. He, there's somebody here that committed suicide or like killed themselves on accident too or something like that. There's, they're like over here, but I can feel them. Hang on, I don't know who this is yet. They're, hang on, hold on. Is, is, is Norman your father? Mm -hmm. really okay he comes up he goes I said I said Norman what are you I said are you like brother sister are you father are you what is this and he goes up and he grabs your hand he feels it you can feel it squish and he says I'm her father and I go okay okay so he in a way is becoming more compassionate for some reason um which usually means that he wasn't that much I guess I, I don't know what was he like in life with this um he tried yeah. he had a he had a a really horrible uh, bringing up, uh, out in Alaska, out on the Aleutian Islands, a lot of um, uh, physical abuse. Oh. And, and so he was afraid to open up and be, um, because he didn't know what would happen. Oh. He never dealt with his, the tragedy that he went through as he was growing up. So he did the, the best, I knew that he, or does really love me. We, there's th three of us and um, I feel like I was his favorite. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and he, he stands, he stands by your side. And I, I gotta tell you from this point of view that there is that, I'm sorry, there's that, com there's that compassion. Like I didn't get this. And so now he's trying to be better. He feels a lot softer now it's almost like he's allowing this to like release and so he man, hold on he goes like this he's like he's talking about i'm guessing we you eat on your couch a lot or something like that or you eat in the living room a lot or something like that because he's talking about like sitting in like the chair next to you or sitting in the seat next to you and like just telling you like either um it's like explaining like either how sorry I am or how uh, this didn't work out and how now we're like preaching and making sure that we do this thing to help you out. So he's like making a game plan with you. He, he said, oh, they were mean. They were mean, yo. I was like, oh, really? He says, back then you didn't question. Back then you didn't question your elders. He says, back then you didn't question them. I said, okay. I said, why is that? And he's like, so there's the abuse. He says that sink or swim, sink or swim. Um, he said that, Did he, did he, was, okay, was he like a, mm, did, was he allergic to alcohol? Yeah. Really? Okay. Well, well, it's, it's our, yeah, our heritage, my dad's side of the family, all of, all of us have issues with alcohol. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I really, okay. I ask him, I go, I go, what he makes me, he takes like a drink. He makes me smell something and I didn't want to say like, like alcoholic, but the way it was, it's just like, if I drink this, it makes me feel nuts. And so for me, that's like an allergy because my husband has yeah. that too. And so they yeah. took about that. It, it, they go black. Like you have, they're gone. You don't know where they went. I, that's why we don't drink. Nobody drinks. Um, they, hold on. He, 
he's talking about watching the kids. I'm guessing now he has grandkids too. He's like watching this, watching this. Everybody's getting all like this whole thing. He's very, very happy about it. He's very much this family man. And what he does is he like stands on top and he like puts everybody around him and he puts his arms around him. So it's like, I couldn't be this way in life. So now I'm going to be this way in passing. And then he says that, he says, he didn't get to say goodbye to you, but now he wants to say goodbye now. So it's not like he's saying goodbye, goodbye, but it's like, okay, I get closure from this specific item, right? So he he's like letting you know, he, what happened to you, dude? Hang on. Uh, he's like blaming, he goes, oh, we don't have to talk about it. When somebody's very, very, uh, he says he's stubborn. So I don't know if he was chronically ill and he just didn't want to go get seen or something like that, but he's like blaming his passing on himself in a way, but I, he didn't commit suicide. He, hold on. Did he have like an aneurysm? Yeah, he had a, a ruptured aneurysm. And um, he drove himself to the hospital. He was out, out in a store and he ran into a friend and he says, I'm not feeling well. I feel like there's something wrong with me. And so he drove himself to the hospital and it ruptured. And so he never got to communicate with us again. Oh my God, dude. He's so good. Do you see it? Like he... So that was his, cause I'm asking him like, why are you placing blame? Why are you placing? So that was the blame of him not being able to communicate. And then I'm like, well, you didn't do anything. And so he shows me, oh, so that's ruptured. That's he, I didn't know what to do. He says, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. He says that worthless. He says they were worthless. So that nobody could fix anything. He said they're worthless. He said, Oh, they put him on life support. Yeah. Yeah. I go, what happened? What happened? I said, so that was it. Did you slump over in the car? Like we're in, he's like, no, no, they got to come in and like, you know, say like people got to say, it. but we didn't I, able to get to communicate. And I was like, okay, so you're put on life support. He says that live life. I said, what he just goes into like what he wants to teach people alive about life. He goes, live life, do it well, tell them you love them. Like he's all into this. My family is strong. My family is strong. He's very much a family person now. He says mm -hmm. that. I wish they had me though. <laughs> That's what he says. I go, okay. Uh, he, he says, my daughter has a soft heart, but he, she lets people take advantage of her. Um, so I need you to not let that happen. Um, he's watching this, or maybe you've gotten better at not doing it. I, I don't know. That's the whole thing, but you're very, very compassionate. And so if you want me to be your guard dog, I'll totally be your guard dog because I'll protect your heart. Um, I would, I would protect you to the ends of the earth. You just let me know, take me off the leash. Um, he, hold on. I want to ask about Did Johnny have cancer? Yeah, he had pancreatic cancer. Cool. Okay. I asked this person, there's a male that shows up and he makes me feel like my passing is very quick and very tragic. And I ask him, I go, well, what happened to you? What happened to you? He shows me his face, like a normal full face. And then he shows me this like super gaunt. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. terrible and so that sign for me is I had cancer he, he it's funny because he took a drink and so for me I should have known that it was like pancreas because that's what they go with like the sugars bounce off of it he oh my god I didn't catch that though good job good job he he's happy he comes up and he's like hi hi how are you how are you he's very this guy is like your gear I like this person he and somebody has to stand for you, you know somebody has to stand for you, you know, you know? says that is that like your best friend or something like that um this almost feels like a best friend brother type of vibe who is this person to you my brother is it johnny is johnny your brother 
Yeah. Okay, perfect. Cool. Yeah. He, he, he puts himself here and he's like, ah, ah. he's like, I love this best friend brother type of vibe. He says that, hang on. He says, dad's trying to make amends. Like dad's father's trying to make amends. Dad's trying to make amends. He says that you always feel like you should have done more for him. You feel like you should have done more for Johnny. You feel like you should have done more. I think, I don't know why I, I, hold on. Was he not living in Washington with you at that point? Like he was living in another state? No, he was living here. But the problem was, was that uh, the, his wife that he was with, um, they kept it a secret and they didn't want us to be a part of anything. And so we didn't know that he was going to be dying and um, she wouldn't let me stay in the hospital with him. Um alone or like I wanted to stay or there overnight because our culture you know you don't leave your no and I'm not any any other culture you just you don't leave someone alone in the hospital no. and they wouldn't they wouldn't let us so I couldn't be with my brother yeah I got to I got <gasps> to see him but I wasn't able to stay with him no oh my god no wonder okay because i'm asking him i was like what you know what happened what happened and he makes me feel like it was so hard to get to each other like we it was almost like if we're states away like it's like oh i can be here for a little bit then i go back right and then it's like this thing and oh my god he it's almost like the wife became vindictive or something after that like she i don't i don't like he puts this on her. And so for me, that means either like we tried to take everything or we tried to keep things away from the family, like even more after that, like she became a real cunt bucket. And I, excuse my French, she, hold on. Why, 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 why? I didn't know what was going on. That's what he says. He's like upset about that. He said that He's like trying to make sure that she's happy. So she would really throw the shit storm if that happened. Says that, I guess she thought I was stronger. So like, yeah, the whole like not staying at the hospital, she would go home and do all this stuff. And I know I'm from having a lot of surgeries. We, I know all about that. And, and, and y'all's culture, which is amazing. They, that's one of the things that I like the best is that they stick together. They stick together. They're not like white people that's like, that's because that's what like we are. It's like, you know, oh, well, you're going to move. You're going to go into a home, whatever. Like, I think that's so stupid. I, anyways, he, hold on. He says, I think about her all the time. And he's like sitting in the chair next to you. And he's like, he's like, tell her, I'm, tell her I'm sorry. He's a jokester. He's a jokester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He certainly is. He is. He's this big, funny, and he laughs every time. He's like, uh, tell her I'm yep. here, you know? Yeah. I know. He, I'm going to ask her if he's with, it's, he's talking about how he, like, like, makes things click in your house, maybe, like, that's him. He's, he, like, makes me hear this. So, I don't know if you hear, like, little creep like little clicks or like little tiny little knocks that's mm -hmm. him and that's him coming in and just saying hey 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 because he's a lighter spirit he can't do a crazy amount but he can do that he says that it's really hard for you to get sleep yeah really my god he talks about i said do you go and see her in her dreams like how does this work he says like it's really hard for you to get sleep but it's interesting because you're so because you're so worried about everybody else that's why um and so we got to figure that out for you we hang on he I tell her to give my give her sister a hug tell her i'm fine and tell her i'll see her when i see her and i'm like wait what and he's like oh it's great over here you got everything you ever want hang on where or what He's talking about how they like kept his body alive way too long. So they should have like either let him go quicker or something like that. I, I don't know. It's like, he was already ready, but they won't. I'm just going to leave that there. He, he goes, wow, wow. So he's not a spiritual person. And so, or he, he exactly says so he's talking about how he's in spirit and how he felt when he left his body and how he was like, wow and so that means that i wasn't a spiritual person in life and now we're amazed at it he on hold on 
you still pray for him you pray for him you need to you need to pray oh my god he mm -hmm. he keeps putting a bear he symbolizes you with a bear like a brown bear a black bear mm -hmm. i don't know I mean, he just literally keeps giving that to you over and over and over again. You're a bear. You're a bear in a good way, like grizzly bear. I think that goes more for like strength than anything. Um, and he, hold on. he puts on a jacket. He walks outside. He's on some sort of deck because I can hear his shoes got 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 on a deck and he has like this maybe blue jacket or what would be navy blue in my head and he's like this and he's looking up at the sky and you can see like smoke coming out so that means it's cold outside and he's like yeah it's pretty good out here you know so for <laughs> him it's like i'm going outside i'm in the forest i'm looking up i'm relaxing like this is my place this is what i like to do this is his heaven so he's it's almost like he can go and he can adventure now he can go and do what he wants to do he's getting away from like the normal you know boxed in you know society way and he's able to go out now he's happy about that he does he have the daughter mm -hmm. who has the daughter who has like this i think maybe they would be 18 now or something like that but who has i have a daughter you have the daughter okay how old is she 25 holy crap okay so she has grown oh okay he keeps taking this little girl it's a daughter and he keeps putting her as like three or four like running around having a good time putting in a dress but then he goes and he says he makes her feel 18 so like we're grown now like this is this and so what that means for me personally because he brings that up is that he's going and he's watching after your daughter and making sure she's okay that's what that is. So that is her, one of her guardians. Okay. That's where that would go. Now I want to go and I want to see if I can grab this really quick. And then if I'll have to go, because I have another session, but if you need me, or if you ever have any questions, or if you want anything, just email me first. Okay. Um, I want to see. Uh -huh. within me hold on did janine die before your daughter was born oh yeah yeah i think janine is your daughter only reason why i say that is because I'm asking this person to come through, you know, and a lot of times, especially when we have older, like my grandmother lived to be 105. Like that's the thing, right? She died in 2009. And um, I'm asking this person to come forward and your brother goes and he shows me this picture of this person. He shows me um, kind of like that we had this long, you know, longer life and everything like that, which is great. And then he takes it and he puts the picture and he puts it on your daughter. Hmm. And so for me, I got to look into that more. I, I only get that like in the past two years, I've had that six times. This would be my seventh time. And so I'm perplexed. Hang on. We didn't, did you end up naming the middle name after her? No, my, her middle name's after my little sister. The other? Okay, 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 okay. They keep talking about it's just this woman's middle name. Hang on. They... I think... I gotta look into that more. I think maybe... Can you do me a favor with this? Yeah. I don't want to confirm it. I want to just say it. Can you send me a picture I don't care what age or whatever it is of your daughter and what I want to do is tomorrow when I do my meditation I want to meditate on that and then I want to compare and I want to feel and I want to see do we have any birthmarks do we have any dates the same where are they going to tell me can you give me more information like all of this stuff but I want to focus on it I don't want to be rushed is that okay yeah that's fine okay yeah cool. I can do that yeah, that would because I want to confirm because they will talk about like dates, what it is, who was there, how we got all these things, like why this comes in here, how they're similar. And I want to do that, but that takes also a little bit of time. And I want to do that for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but I think she's reincarnated. Like, because they're talking about her. <laughs> I'm not talking to her. 
And so if spirit is not in spirit, if spirit is in earth, then you can't talk to them. <laughs> that's kind of how that works. Um, but that's very, very rare. Um, very, very, very rare. So, okay. So for right now in closing, I want you to do a couple of things. Number one, I want you to have um, a really good, they're bringing up like huskies. They're bringing up dogs. They're bringing up like, I don't understand this. It's like you literally are in the, you're, you're the spirit of giving. You're in the embodiment of giving. I, I don't know. I think you just, you have a vibe about you. I love you. So, okay. So for right now, I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to take a couple minutes and I either want you to have a good breather. Or I want you to have a good cry. The next thing I want you to do is tonight before you go to bed, if you can, I mean, or do this in the morning, if you can light a white candle or some candle, if anything, so set an intention. So when you light it, say, I do this for you, my brother, I do this for you, my father, I do this for you, my sister, I love you so much. And so it's the intention. And so what that is, it's an energy, it's a vibe, you're putting that forward and they're picking it up. And so that's what I want you to do. Tell them thank you, tell them you love them, show them appreciation, because that's all this is about. And then send me that when you get a second. And then tomorrow when I do my meditation, I'll vibe on it and I'll email you back. Okay. okay. Sounds and then good. If you need me, let me know. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you, my dear. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. It was wonderful to meet you. I love you, you too. <laughs> I think you're amazing. And yeah, if you have any questions or anything, just email me. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, honey.